Well, let's try this again. Chloe 2, Lunacy's Veil. We're going to save over what we just started. It was going so well. On normal. Uh, this is any percent normal support mode. Uh, we start when I gain control of Klonoa, which will be in three, two, one, go. Support mode is on. We have Popka um, and we can do the support mode jump. Whee! Thank you very much for the good luck. How are you doing, um, Hypnotics? Have you uh, recovered from UK Ashi yet? Yeah. So, enjoy the enjoy the the dull, dulcet tones. Recover, <laughs> recovering from marathons in 2022 is. Uh, there's been there's been a lot of marathons on. Ooh, very nice. Sounds exciting. Recovering from marathons is it's it depends it depends what time your marathon run is. I've had a I've had a couple of late night ones lately. So U UK she was like one o'clock in the morning and um I had a metal run at midnight or no, that was, I think that was around one o'clock in the morning for um for FTLG as well. And then, and then, as if I hadn't had enough of them, I then went and joined FLT, um, FTLG staff. <laughs> uh, which should mean, actually, I've just realised um, I have I have done a stream since FTLG, and I forgot about it. But um, not only did I join FTLG staff because FTLG is a Twitch partner, I'm now on their Twitch team. So somewhere on my Twitch page, I haven't I haven't been to look at it yet. Um, somewhere on my Twitch page, it should say that I'm I'm a member of that team. And if you go. I think it now means if you go to FTLG's page, um, if I'm the only one streaming or there's no one above me, obviously I'm, I'm at the bottom of the list because I'm the latest one to join it. Um, but if no one else is from that team is streaming, I will appear on FTLG's page. So if you're watching this from the FTLG page, hi. <laughs> For the love of greening. <laughs> I mean that sound that sounds like you're doing lucid th um sort of lewd things to me. Oh, I'm gonna give him a right greening. Nick RP Green, we'll give him a right greening. Ugh. <laughs> that's um that's not a nice thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dirty Nick, dirty Nick, mind out of the gutter. Yeah. Right, here's Baggagey. We're gonna ignore Baggagey. <laughs> See, see, now I'm creeped out because when I first looked at that, the the icon was green, and then I noticed it changed colour. But at first, it was green. <laughs> it's like, what? stop, why would? <laughs> it's scary. It's starting to scare me, dude. Use Popka there just to get over those jumps. And again, just enjoy the lovely tones of Klonoa Two, and enjoy the lovely colours of Klonoa Two. I love this game so much. There's a re there's a reason I'm still playing it and still speedrunning it after after first learning the speedrun ten years ago. I think it's because I didn't I've only casually speedrun it before, and it's only in the last couple of years when I actually became a proper speedrunner um, that I then started taking it a bit more seriously. I, I think if I'd I'd stuck with it constantly, I'd have got bored of it. You know. <laughs> you know how I don't play Metal Gear Solid 1 anymore? <laughs> That's the complete opposite of this. I played so much Metal Gear Solid 1, I don't want to touch the game again. <laughs> I will I will at some point. I wanna I do want to learn the console run of MGS1. I'd like to go back and do like um the other um difficulties for all bosses, because I only I only ever did easy and very easy uh for all bosses. Whereas I did do every difficulty for any percent. <laughs> Don't insult my namesake. I hate Metal Gear Solid. I hate Metal Glen Solid. I hate Snake Socom. Anyone whose name has something to do with Metal Gear. Yay, I got that. <laughs> yes, time save. <laughs> Finally got the timing right on grabbing that Moo as it spawns. That was really nice. Yeah. 
Right, I'm trying to think of... How do I ungift myself? I don't want to be here. <laughs> who else is named after Metal Gear? Who else, who else can we... Who else, who else can we, uh, can we insult at the same time? Oh, I jumped on that a little too quickly. There we go. <laughs> just get, just get banned, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, just get banned. <laughs> I wouldn't ban, I wouldn't ban Glenn. <laughs> He's the only other person who plays on metal. <laughs> Hint, hint to everyone. Oh I, oh, I knew, I knew that I was being a bit hasty there. I thought, oh, I wonder if I could get that in time. Lit, slight, slight bit of time lost for that, but ow, little bugger. Shout out to heavy metal names. <laughs> if you've got a heavy metal name. You just got a shout out from Plywood. Too busy flying. Oh, are you playing um, uh, Zone of the Enders? How did your um, GDQ tutorial stream go? Um, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. I, I do want to have a watch, but um, I was going to ask how um, how that went. Still waiting to hear hear back from GDQ. I did apply. I did apply for one of their hotfix shows um, a while ago, but haven't heard anything yet. Oh, oh well, that's not too bad. Nice. I wasn't, wasn't in the right position for that one, but that's a... Oh, what? Oh, that angle. Okay, that's not too bad. Nice. Oh, that's good. Now, I've done I've done one done one GDQ hotfix, uh, but I would like to do another one. Oh, that move a little bit late but that's fine we can throw that one there and then hopefully oh he's turned again he is not being nice to me here um i actually apply, i've actually applied <laughs> i was i was ju just talk, just talking about not wanting to play metal gear solid one um they've got a show i can't remember if it's called i think it's called that's never happened before or, or is it Son of a Glitch? I can't remember. They've got they've got a show that focuses on talking about glitches and things in in runs. Um, I actually submitted Metal Gear Solid One to it, um, but it's not it's not just you do the run and that's it. You you have the opportunity to like do a showcase of stuff and then do a run if you want to. Because because not all glitches in speed runs are necessarily used in speed runs. Some some aren't. Um, so yeah, I wanted to I wanted to uh, put forward very easy for Metal Gear Solid One PC and sort of talk about the history behind you know how those glitches have worked in the past, how they work now, all the different things we can do with, like the elevators because there's a load of fun things that we can do with the elevators um, in very easy, but you don't do them in a speed run because they either don't, like completely block you or they just don't save any time. Um, but yeah, I, I applied for that quite a while ago, but never never heard back. Uh, obviously, I, I was on a I was on GDQ Hot Fixes. Uh, What's faster? Uh, back in May, um, I appeared alongside House Test, where he was running Metal Gear Solid One PC very easy, all bosses. I was running um, Metal Gear Solid the Twin Snakes very easy. Um, to answer the, the age-old question of which is faster? And the answer is me playing Twin Snakes. Uh, we did. I, I think we also did it during the um, Metal Gear Solid 2 20th anniversary event. I think that, that event, we, we were like almost bang on time as well. I think I, I won, but only by like five seconds or something weird like that. Oh, let's get out of the way of these fish. Stay away, fishies. Just gonna jump over that because it's a bit slow. Alright. <laughs> that then means that then means I have to I have to plow into that spiker. Uh, but yeah, I'm not I'm not sure I'd want to teach something on 
Well, may maybe. I'd have to. I'd have to see how it kind of works out. Because I've done. I've done tutorial streams for several games, and there's there's more that I'd like to do. Um, I was going to do a tutorial stream for Ground Zeroes, but then um, Really Frame started making. I think it was Really Frame started making some tutorials, but he only he's only done one. He's only done the Ground Zeroes one so far. Um, so I was considering maybe maybe going back to that. Um, I do still want to do a tutorial for uh, Twin Snakes for Extreme Lethal because uh, I've done the very easy tutorial, uh, but I did want to do an Extreme Lethal tutorial because most of the most of the tutorial stuff for Extreme is to do with non-lethal and getting big boss. But I I actually really enjoyed running um, running lethal. And I think it's I think it's quite a valuable run. Certainly, it's a it's a nice stepping stone to then getting into big boss. Um, so, so there's that. And the, uh, I was considering also doing a, a hard um, tutorial as well because hard hard's quite different. Because in hard in hard we uh, we don't grab the. Um, we don't grab the we don't grab the M9 in hard, or at least don't know if we don't grab the hard. I I I've not been grabbing the M9 in hard, but we still don't know whether it's faster to to go out of our way and grab it, and the time saves that then come along with that. I'm trying to turn as as little as possible as we as we go down here. The less I turn, the quicker it is for me to grab tap. Tiny little turns. Start firing. Come here, tap. There we go. Bash her, bash her into a cactus on the way past. That should be another nice little time save. Lovely. I should say, I am still planning on submitting uh, Twin Snakes to AGDQ. Uh, th this Twin Snakes and On Metal will be my three games to submit to to AGDQ. There's nothing. There's nothing else really at the moment. I don't think I'd want to submit Ground Zeroes. I don't actually think I'm that good at Ground Zeroes. Um, and also, if they wanted anyone to run Ground Zeroes at GDQ, they'd be much better off getting Joseph Joestar and getting him to do stealth no kills because it's way, it's a way more impressive run than what I do. And of course, the the more games I submit, the more chance there is that they pick something that isn't on metal. And my my ultimate goal, as much as I you know, I'd be looking forward to doing Twin Snakes or doing Klonoa. I think I think Klonoa's got a, a pretty good chance. Twin Snakes is just there because I'm I'm a good Twin Snakes runner, and I and you know I'm, it fills out a nice third slot. But I think Klonoa's got a good chance because of the timing of it. Unmetal has never been shown at GDQ, and also that's the one that I really want to get in to, to show it off and try and encourage more people to play it. <laughs> I've started working on Unmetal's Wikipedia page because uh, it doesn't have one. It was um, until the other day it was only mentioned in on one page on Wikipedia, and it was the E3 um, that it was announced at. Um, it was announced during an indie showcase for for E3 one year. Um, that's the that's the only Wikipedia page that it had appeared on it now, because I edited it. It now also appears on the um, versus Evil Wikipedia page, which is the the game's publisher. Uh, but I have started a, a draft for an actual full full wiki page for uh, for Unmetal, because because it should have one. Un Unepic's got one. I think Ghost has got one. Uh, fly up here. Uh, next puzzle. This is the puzzle I don't like. Because I think... That's how we do that puzzle. <laughs> I think you're biased. 
it's a bit difficult because when you're when you're setting up a when you're setting up a Wikipedia page, it does ask you. You know, it, it's it tells you you shouldn't make Wikipedia pages based on like yourself or your friends or things you're connected to, and it does ask you. You know, are you connected to this thing? And I'm like, well, is it officially no. Like, I don't. I'm, I'm not in the game's credits or or anything like that. I don't. I don't actually have any official affiliation with the game. I'm. I'm just. You know, I'm just the world's fastest speedrunner for it. Um, does that does that give me an affiliation to it? Um, but but I, I think that's that's no different. That's no different from from anyone creating a um, a Wikipedia page on on something they enjoy. Obviously, you're not going to make a Wikipedia page on something that you don't enjoy or don't know anything about. So I'm probably one of the best people to make a Wikipedia page for it. Because you know, Fran, you know, Fran and Fran shouldn't be making his own Wikipedia page. I actually create I created a new Wikipedia account for it. My old I think my old one got deactivated because I used it in so long. And I think the only edit I ever made has uh, has now been removed anyway because because uh, the page has been updated so many times. It's about my old school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like call. I call. I called front up. If you, if I, if uh, if I make, if I make your Wikipedia page, will you uh, give me, give me exclusive? Um, oh, sugar. Exclusive um, early access to Unmetal Two. And he was like, "Yeah, boy." <laughs> <laughs> he was definitely not like yeah boy <laughs> for a star from <France> Spanish <laughs> and would not sound anything like that <laughs> alright everyone's favourite clown it's Leptio oh, yo, yo, yo. Oh! <laughs> there's the real one because because uh, the real one is spinning I'll throw a move across there Oh, that's a nice, uh, nice spawn point for that move. Oh, and another, another move. We're gonna run over towards this move so we can grab it straight away. Oh no, 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 no. That's bad. Leptio, please don't. No, Leptio, no. You ah, oh, this is why I hate this fucking clown. <laughs> Suddenly, flavor flave. Ah, oh, that was so annoying. Ugh. All right, let's see if I can at least grab a Moo in um, as it disappears. Yes! Did it! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i got to be careful here. i got to wait for the other Moos to... There we go. We've got to wait for the other Moos to spawn before... Uh, yesterday in practice when I managed that trick, um, I threw I threw a Moo straight away and got him rolling, and the other moves hadn't spawned yet, so he just rolled around, and I couldn't do anything. Okay, well, at least gra at least getting that trick right has saved a little bit of time from, you know, messing up the start. So that's quite nice. Where's he jumping? There he is. Cool. Pulled, pulled back a little bit of time there. Not a lot of time, but a, li a little bit of time. All right, off to off to the Volk. After it tells us that we've unlocked Mommet House, you've unlocked our Mommet House. Je <laughs> de <laughs> That was, a, that was an interesting line of dialogue. Sure. The I think that's I think that's the noise he made. I could be wrong. I don't know. Am I, am I getting the dialect right? Uh, more cutscenes. We just skip through these cutscenes. 
IGT isn't running during cutscenes, so we're not waiting. It doesn't matter how long it takes. As long as we, uh, as long as we're on it as soon as we get back control, like now. Oh, ow! Oh, I'm hurt and turned on at the same time. Ow! That's it. Uh... That's it. That's a Boo Burnham joke. Not to grab that one. Empire of Dreams when? Ooh. It's been a while since I've played the, the, the GBAs. Empire of Dreams and Dream Champ Tournament. I did, the, the GBA games are really good for, for, for GBA games. They're really solid games. Nah, nah, dude. Beach volleyball first. If we're gonna do, if we're gonna do anything, <laughs> anything else Klonoa related, it's gotta be beach volleyball. I understand the speed one for for beach volleyball involves um, a trick very very early on. Uh, you only get one chance at the trick. If you get the trick right, the run is over in about ten minutes. If you get the trick wrong, the run is over in like an hour or <laughs> something like that. I was like, after seeing it at, um, after seeing it UKSG, one game I wouldn't mind learning to speedrun just for the fun of it and just to say, yeah, I've done it, would be um, Spyro into the Dragonfly. Uh, there was a there was a really cool tutorial uh, run of Enter the Dragonfly. Um, I and sadly I forget the name of. The, I forget the name of the runner who presented it. It was Rebel Dragon. Um, Rebel Dragon was the runner who was learning. Um, but enter the enter the dragonfly. The final boss. The the entrance to the final boss is is right at the start of the game. It's just the entrance doesn't open up until you've you know completed the rest of the game. But if you time a head bash. Um, if you if you land a head bash in a very specific location, um, then you can actually just um, clip through it and immediately from the very start clip through to the final boss, and the run is the run is over in like less than two minutes. So I've been I'm I'm tempted to give that a crack just just because I can, <laughs> just because I know how it's done and I want to do it myself. Notch a, notch another one off on the old. Uh, on the old speed running board. A uh, little example of Klonoa's Wiggle. So one of the other uh, the sort of key mechanics of the game is is Klonoa's Wiggle. Um, we don't do it very often in the run because it's really slow. Um, but any time where we just sort of want to keep our momentum going forwards, so we just need to make a little bit of distance. Um, you don't mash X running; you just hold it. So when you when you jump. If you then hold X after jumping, Colonel will do his little his little hover wiggle. Uh, we might have to do it here because um, there's a, there's another jump coming up that um, can be a little bit sketchy. I don't think I'm going to make that. I think I used Popka too early and and hit the ceiling. There we go. That's his little wiggle. Okay, we use Popka again there. Any any time where we might wiggle, it's quicker to use Popka. Because the wiggle slows Kalina right down, but Popka doesn't doesn't stop his momentum. Bow, bow, wow, wow. Bounce. Grab that. Nice. We can go like that and completely skip out all of that. Oh, tried to jump there and instead did another wiggle. Uh, we're just approaching the end of this level, uh, and then we're going to be moving on to Underground Factory, which is a, which has our our first major time save compared to. 
compared to the uh, the splits that we're up against. Keep I keep remembering not to say PB because it's not my PB that we're running against. Sadly, after obtaining my PB, I didn't save my splits before my computer crashed. Oh, another little time save there. Another three seconds juiced. Oh, it's uh, a little bit more comfy, shall we? All right, uh, underground factory, and straight off the bat, we're going to be doing a we're going to be doing a glitch. Um, we're going to use this glitch a couple of times throughout the the run, but the first the first use of it is the most impressive. There are certain textures that um, and hitboxes that only load in. Uh, one when Klonoa touches a certain patch of floor. So we're actually going to stop the floor itself from spawning in. We're going to do a super bounce up here. Wiggle. That's going to despawn the floor there. We're just going to... And perfect. So we just clip through the floor down to, uh, to the level below. Because it's all the same room. It's just um, we're supposed to go down. So that was, that was absolutely spot on. Um, I've, I've gotten that down quite nicely. And that's um, that's a trick I only learned within the last 12 months. Uh, as I said said towards the start of the... Towards the start of streaming this, I've been... I've been casually... I, I use the term casually speedrun. <laughs> um, I've been, I've been speedrunning this game for 10 years, but it's only in the last year or so that I've really, like, gotten to grips with it and taken it a bit more seriously. And that includes learning a bunch more stuff. Like this trick. So we just did the exact same thing again. Uh, we stopped this door from spawning by... Uh, by not touching the floor before it. Uh, there is one of these um, which does exist in the PlayStation 2 version that isn't doable in this version. At least I don't think it's... I've not been able to do it. Uh, so I'm going to throw that over there. Play play this room set. I made a right mess of this room before. It is a shame they didn't include volleyball in this collection. It would have been really easy to do so. Because volleyball was on the PS1. Um, I, th I think... Oh, wrong button. Sorry. Um, I think volleyball was on the PS1. I don't know, actually, because... Volleyball had Klonoa 2 characters in it. I'm pretty sure Popka and Lolo are in Volleyball. Maybe that maybe Volleyball came out before Lunity is Veil. They just knew that what the characters were gonna be. I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know much about the, the history of the, the series development or anything. I don't know much about the series. I've only to to this day I've I've completed Klonoa 2. And I've completed the two Game Boy Advance games. I, I've still never played... I've, I, I started Daughter Phantom Isle once, and I just couldn't couldn't get into it. Um, I've tried the remake of Daughter Phantom Isle twice. Uh, it's Klonoa for the Wii. And again, I, I put a lot more time into it, but I just never got around to finishing it. <laughs> I'm not doing too bad. How are you, Ozzy? Uh, unfortunate, unfortunately, this is my second attempt at this run. I got all the way to... Um, Maze of Memories and my PC crashed. Um, there's something's going on with my PC at the moment. This is it's happened a couple of times recently. I need to work out what it is. But um, it happened on Thursday stream, and my second run I managed to complete. So I'm hoping I can do that now. Uh, this is the PC version. So this is um, this is the new Fantasy Reverie um, remake or remaster. It's, I think it's more appropriate to call this a remaster uh, than a remake. Oh. That was quite nice in the end. I, there was always there was always another there was always another tap bot ready to ready to throw it on. If I if I was to get another version of I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind the Switch version of this. All right, we'll, uh... Oh, 
Oh, I didn't make it up there. Yay, I got in the cannon though. That was alright. And the cannon spawned that. Um, that cannon can sometimes not spawn and you might have to run around for for a couple of minutes working out where um, where the spawn point is. Because again, it's an, another object that, tri that the spawn of it triggers by Klonoa being in a certain location beforehand. So if you use Popka to skip a load of it. Uh, as far as I'm aware, she's all right. She's been listening to the same piece of music over and over um, all afternoon. Uh, she's in Cheltenham uh, today at uh, Cheltenham Racecourse, um, but not to see horses. Uh, to, there's a um, uh, the national brass band competition is on, and she she used to be in her hometown's brass band when she was uh, when she used to live live with her parents. Uh, so she's uh, she's gone to support them and watch them. Uh, she's not playing this time. I I once went with her when she was playing. She um she sometimes she sometimes goes back and you know does percussion for them and stuff like that. stuff stuff that's really easy to to quickly pick up and you know doesn't need to have practiced for for a whole lot because it's fairly simple. You know stuff like you know the triangle and the bells and certain drums and things like that. Uh, I think she'd I think she'd xylophone. Um, at the one the one I watched her do. Um, but the thing with it being a competition is every single every single band has to play the same piece. They're all given they're all given a piece that they must play. Um, and so, you know, if you go and watch it, and I think there's something like 15 bands, you listen to the same piece of uh, piece of music, albeit slightly different variations each time, because every every band has their their slight different way of of interpreting it and playing it, but yeah, you listen to this. And the la last time when I saw it, the piece they were playing was so freaking dreary and horrible. Hated it. <laughs> cool, fairly safe mobile tank. I didn't go for any of the um, any of the quick shots because I need to I need to practice those outside of um, an actual run. Work out where where it is they go. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, pretty good. Saved a bit more time, now three minutes. We're looking to be trying to get that uh, time save to 12 minutes. MGS speedruns, um, I haven't actually played any MGS. Um, for, I mean, I, I, I did do um, Ground Zeroes over the weekend, um, over la last weekend. Um, if you saw that, I was at FTLG um, showcasing uh, Ground Zeroes. And I had the absolutely lovely... Um, Laura Burke, uh, sorry, Laura Burke, Donna Burke, uh, join me on comms. Uh, Donna is the uh, the voice of uh, the iDroid in Ground Zeroes and in Phantom Pain. Uh, but more famously, she um, she's the vocalist for Heaven's Divide from Peace Walker and Sins of the Father from um, Phantom Pain. That was dangerous. I shouldn't have done that on um, on that little health. Ah, oh, no super bounce by the well. It was it was really cool. I was you know I was like um, proper proper get. I was try, trying to sort of keep myself composed and you know be be cool be cool about it. But like as soon as she turned up, I was just like, oh my god, it's it's not bad. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I was um, I was very much geeking out. Um, that wasn't the only geek out opportunity I had during it. Um, very late on, I um, they were still looking for hosts um, um, throughout the whole thing. They, they were a bit understaffed for it, um, and they were struggling with hosts a bit, um, which is one of the reasons why I then joined joined their staff team at the end of it, because I was like, you guys are doing so well. I really want to support a marathon. I really want to support a, a marathon that isn't Metal Gear. I, as much as I, I want to continue to do stuff um, for Metal Gear speedrunners, I also want to support an external marathon to get my name out there a bit more. Um, and um, so I said, you know, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like you to be that that marathon that I support. Can we get a super? Ch oh, didn't get a super bounce there and nearly killed myself. I have not met David. I've not met David Hater, uh, but for um, uh, for my wedding anniversary, uh, not my wedding, my. Um, 
me and my wife's anniversary, not our wedding anniversary, but our anniversary of getting together a um, couple of years ago, um, she got me a, um, a cameo from him. Um, which ca cameo is where you can, is where you go on, you, you go on the, the app and it's got loads of famous people on it and you just, you pay to get them to say something. And um, yeah, she got David Hayter to, to give me a, you can get you can get loads of people on. Okay, it's a really. I, I'm not surprised there's so many celebrities on it. It's a really quick ma way of celebrities making you know just a, a little bit of extra money on the side. You know, sit, f film you film yourself, film yourself on your phone camera for two minutes saying something, and you'll get paid seventy quid to do it. <laughs> you know, it's um, pretty easy. Pretty easy money. So I'm not surprised that the um, there's so many celebrities on it. Uh, but yeah, she got me a message from from David Hayter saying, you know, you know, I understand it's your anniversary. I understand your your wedding got um, your wedding got postponed because of this fox die virus. Obviously, he was referring to to COVID, but um, he called it fox die. And he said, and and, and remember, love really can bloom on the battlefield. And he said, that if you if you are going to go out, wear a mask. Make sure you don't get into any crab battles. Um, yeah, so I've no, I've not met David Hater, but David Hater has talked about me before. <laughs> that was really nice. Uh, but that, oh, I was saying that wasn't the only geek out opportunity I've um, I had during FTLG. So I was saying that they were a bit understaffed and they were they were still looking for host really late on. And I didn't offer to host at first because I'll be honest, I'd forgotten that the event was on when I got contacted by. Um, by the organizer Corey about uh, um, Donna being available to to co-host, I was like, "Are you talking to the right person?" I was, uh, I was like, "I didn't submit Ground Zeroes to this. I think you might be wanting to talk to to Joseph Joseph or something like that." And I went back to to o Oengus and checked it out. I was like, "Oh, I did submit to this. I completely forgot." Um. So yeah, I um, so I I didn't offer to host because I I wanted to spend some time with Heidi after after UKSG. Um, well, that was not a super bounce. Come on, move, 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 move. Please jump, please jump. Yay, there we go. He's jumped. There we go. It just means I can I can keep moving there. Speeds things up somewhat. Uh, so when I when I heard that they were still looking for hosts, um, and they said you know you pick your pick your slot, um, whichever one you want. I noticed uh, on the fr the Friday night uh, I knew Heidi would be going to bed quite early, um, and on the Friday night um, Snake Socom was doing his run of um, MGS3. So I was like, oh let's you know let's um, support that then. Kill, you know, kill two birds with one stone. I, I get to support them with hosting, and I get to host during a Metal Gear run. Um, so I, I did his run, and I did this, the run before it and the run after it. Um, and unbeknownst to me, because I hadn't, I hadn't been keeping up with all the news, the run before it, which was, oh, I can't remember the name of the, the name of the game, but it's, it's a game where you have to keep out of the shadows. Um, if you ever go in the shadows in the game, you, you die. Um, and it had two voice actors joining for for comms. Um, it was I think the girl's name was um, Natalie Kirk or, or so. I I can't remember. I'm, I'm following her on Twitter now, but um, I can't remember what her name was. She's she's not a very well known voice actress. She's she's kind of she's kind of up and coming and 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 new to it. This was one of her first major gigs, but she has done. Um, she's been in Genshin Impact. Um, and she was also in, um, one of the, like, Final Fantasy spin-offs. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was a, it was a PC game. Oh, got that, got that right that time. That was nice. Um, yeah, I can't remember. I'll, I'll have to, I'll look it up. But the, um, the, the second voice actor, um, was David's, Dave, oh, what's this? I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember. It was. It wasn't Heart of Darkness. I'll, I'd recognise the name if you said it, but um, it was a. I think it was an. In, it was an indie game. Um, 
I keep I keep thinking I've got David Harbour in my head and that's that's not it. Anyway, the the voice actor Dave who was also who was also there, um, he is most famous for voicing Agent 47 in every Hitman game. So I when I then heard when I then learned that he was Oh, I missed that chat. You can you can make it up there with Popka, but I keep messing it up. Um when I then understood I, I love um I've played I think I've played every Hitman game. Um I I struggled with them. The I struggled with the earlier ones. Um I think to this day, hang on a sec. No, don't don't jump again. Okay, tr attempt number one. Two attempt again. As as I said before, it's easier. The timing of that trick is easier on this second attempt uh, because the the spawn of the and where he is jump you know floating in midair changes after you respawn rather than come through the door. So more often than not, that does take me two attempts. So I'm never, I'm never going to be, I'm never going to be disappointed about doing that in two attempts instead of one. I'll always say, I'll always take two attempts for that and be, and be happy. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure to this day, the only, the only Hitman game I've ever completed. Now I pl I've played loads. Um, I remember playing, I, I remember playing all the way up to the very last level in the first game. And then getting stuck and couldn't couldn't finish it. Um, I played a little bit of the second one. Um, I played quite a lot of I played a lot of Blood Money. Didn't I? Don't know if I've played Contracts. That might be the only one I haven't touched. Um, but I did complete Absolution, and I have completed Hitman One from the um, from the um, the sort of reboot trilogy. Um, I started Hitman Two, but I played. Oh, whoops. Um, I played so much of Hitman 1 that by the time it then came to me to play um, to play 2, I was kind of... I'd kind of worn, my, worn myself out a little bit. Silent Assassin's the first one, isn't it? Um, I do own 3 as well. As in the, the, the trilogy, the IO Interactive trilo most recent trilogy, I do own 3, um, but obviously I haven't played it because I've been... Yeah, you know, I I want to go back and play and finish too. I did start to. Um, I just you know, I'd kind of burnt myself out a little bit after so much one. Oh, so, um, si Silent Assassin is the second one, isn't it? Hitman Two, Silent Assassin. But yeah, so I then discovered that the other voice actor is is Agent Forty Seven, and I'm like, what? This was, this was. Um, I was not aware of this. This is so cool. And I, uh, because they were, because they were constantly talking, they, um, you know, they were, they didn't really cut to donations or anything because they were, co they were constantly chatting for, you know, for good reason. Um, so I didn't really get to, to join in a lot, but, um, you know, I, I introduced the, well, I introduced the runner and he introduced, um, <laughs> I introduced the runner and then he, and then he introduced them. Um, and so I'm just sort of quietly... You know, quietly geeking out in the background, listening to them chat, um, and and during the, during it, they had some conversations about voice acting in general, and um, they talked about you know what it's like to be a voice actor and sort of having having that an anonymity behind being a voice actor because you know you can not everyone knows what voice actors look like, um, and they were talking about you know different kinds of fans and and stuff like that and. And how some fans can be sort of over the top and a bit, you know, a bit creepy, and um, you know, and, and sometimes it's it's very it's they get very different experiences with them all. And at the end at the end of it, when I then came back on to to sort of close it up and and say, you know, we're going to go to a break and here's the next run. Um, I then I then said um, it's been an absolute pleasure listening to you guys, and I feel I feel a little little guilty because you were talking about you know the different kinds of fans that you have and and what it's like to 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 have an anonymity in, in voice acting and the entire sort of first ten minutes of you guys chatting, I've just been like it's Agent Forty Seven, it's Agent Forty Seven. 
<laughs> so yeah, that was um, they, they they had a good chuckle about that. Um, but it was really cool. But then the the really weird thing was is is during during their chat um, during their chat, David um, mentioned that he was still working with IO Interactive, um, and and they had an they had an, uh, a project that he thinks that the the girl would be would be ideal for so she was going to he was going to make some um yeah he wanted to to talk to her about it and they actually carried on after the street after the run ended and we went to intermission they sort of carried on talking about it and i was i'm not going to say much about what was said because it's all sort of very confidential and, and hush hush i wouldn't want to uh, the, um you know betray their confidence at all not that they said anything too over the top but it was just weird, you know. At the end of this day, I'm just sort of sat there in the background listening to two to two voice actors talk about, you know, getting getting work um, on on their next projects, and it was all just a bit surreal. Um, and um, I mean, David David did mention it that of course the one project that IO Interactive is currently working on is the next Bond game, and I I remember hearing the I remember hearing the news that um io interactive were, were had been given the next bond game and and i i just thought i cannot think of a more perfect developer to develop a bond game with what they've done with the latest hitman trilogy if they can turn that into a bond game that's gonna that is gonna be a a hell of a game I've never, I've not been much of a Bond game fan in the past. The only, the only Bond game I've ever played to completion uh, was Everything or Nothing, uh, which I really enjoyed. I, I, I really like Everything or Nothing. It's a good game. I was say it's the, it's the only one I've ever, I've ever played to completion. I've played, uh, I played GoldenEye Rogue Agent. Um. I played a bit of GoldenEye Rogue Agent. I think that's it for Bond games. I've never, I've never played the original GoldenEye. I didn't play From Russia with Love or Nightfire. Um, I certainly haven't played any of the newer ones like Bloodstone. I heard Bloodstone was bad. I heard Legends was bad. Um, I can't, I can't remember any others, but. Yeah, I think Everything or Nothing was the only one I've ever played to completion. Yeah, never never played Tomorrow Never Dies, never played World Is Not Enough. I didn't play the GoldenEye remake. Um, I do understand GoldenEye is... Um, the original N64 GoldenEye is coming to Xbox and Switch. Although, interestingly, online play is exclusive to the Twitch version. Uh, to the uh, Twitch version. Uh, is exclusive to the Switch version. You won't be able to play online multiplayer on the Xbox version of um, of GoldenEye for some reason. So it seems really weird. A young Bond adventure game. That'd be cool. I'd have loved to have seen a, seen a game sort of that revolving around um, bond, bond around the time of Casino Royale. Which I suppose Bloodstone might have been, but I, as I said, I heard... I heard Bloodstone wasn't very good. I thought I'd missed that pad then. Everything or Nothing was nice because it, it really captured that sort of campy, campy Pierce Brosnan version of Bond really well in, in the gameplay as well. Uh, you, um, it's not the only game to have had it, but um, it has things called Bond moments where you um, where you, you're encouraged to do certain actions. Uh, you know, it might it might be something like blowing up, blowing blowing up all of the pyramids in a section, or um, you know, killing it, th killing a guard by throwing him out of a window, or something something like that. Um, I remember there's one where you're infiltrating a nightclub, and there is a there is a a topless woman lying on a massage bed. You can't you can't see anything because she's lying face down on a on a massage bed waiting for a massage. And if you walk up to her and interact with her, um, Bond will give her a small massage, and you'll get a, and he'll, you know, Pierce Brosnan will say a cheesy one-liner, and then you'll get the, and that'll be a Bond moment. It's, it, it was nice that it included those kind of little cheeky, cheeky moments that you'd expect from from Pierce Brosnan. 
as the other the other nice thing about um everything or nothing is um all of the all of the um voice acting was provided by the original actors they also did all of the um they had their uh, they didn't i don't think they did motion capture but they had their they had their likenesses like digitally recreated like it took took 360 body scans of them so they could use them in the game um the the villain was played by willem dafoe um willem dafoe who's never been in a bond film but was the the main villain in uh, a bond game uh, i can't remember i can't remember who else was in it had a really had a really cool um theme tune Give me everything or nothing. I have considered speedrunning it, but um, when I then watch it, I'm like, yeah, maybe I don't want to. Also, I think that the GameCube version is the fastest version. I don't, I don't fancy trying to get into it because I don't think they allow emulation for it. Uh, I think I'm at full health here. I am at full health. I don't need to get the um, the health pack here. We will grab the uh, the Urbil though. There we go. For, there we go. First try. Nice. Can do that with Popka, but um, you get a little bit more height with an Urbil, so it's a bit safer to do it that way. Jump over there, throw through there. Lovely. Love that trick. <laughs> such a cool, such a cool trick. It's probably it's probably my favourite trick in the game. We'll uh, use Popka to hold on to this Urbil, because we're gonna use this Urbil to um to abuse the 2.5D by going here, and then we're gonna go back on ourselves, use Popka, get over the invisible wall, and we're now up here. Uh, I'm going to grab this checkpoint because I haven't actually had a checkpoint in a while. Come on, flying moves. Spawn a bit. Spawn a bit faster. That was really clean. That was nice. Um, I have not had a, I have not had a journey up that room that clean in a while. That should be um, a significant, well, not significant time save. But that should be a nice little time save there. All right, on to the final final puzzle of um, Maze of Memories. Casually, this one, this one is a pain. Um, takes um, takes a bit of getting used to. So we're gonna grab this boomy, take the boomy through to this herbal room. I'm gonna throw the boomy there. We're gonna leave the herbal room. That's gonna cause the uh, boomy to explode prematurely. It is quick quicker to to do that than to wait. Uh, then we grab the herbal. Now we're gonna take the herbal into the laquari room which is the, the golden room here. That allows us to uh, bash through those blocks. Grab the Laquari. And now what you're, su you're actually supposed to, like, go back and get the Boomy first. And But because we've got... Um, throw the Urbil. There we go. We've got to wait for the Laquari to come back to, um, come back to close hand before we go through the door. Because here, um, if we didn't have Popka, we wouldn't be able to, to jump up there we'd need to use lums um and there is a so you have to like use a boomy you have to go and get the boomy first i think take the boomy to the laquari's room and then throw it on the ground and then throw the laquari at it so it's, it's not that much longer uh that's a nice nice little time save there we are uh, we are past the halfway point of the run now and we are halfway towards our target of um dropping 12 minutes from this previous time so we're aiming we're aiming for sub one uh one hour and ten uh from igt 
Um, the run that I'm comparing this to is a 121, but my actual PB is one. I think it's 113. Uh, but I did, unfortunately, uh, my computer crashed before it could save um, could save the splits. Um, so as we're still comparing against my first run, to get a one to get a 110 off a 121, to get sub 110 off a 121, that means we need to save 12 minutes. So we're already we've already saved six, nearly six and a half minutes. So we are well on target for saving saving that time. But obviously, we now need to do that again second time. Oh, let's not mess this this boss up. Have fun with Dead by Daylight. Game I have been meaning to go back to and uh, have a play around with. All right, phase two of Polante. Uh, phase one was fairly straightforward. Phase two, we do have a, a, a tricky bit towards the end. So I need to... <laughs> Oh, you get to play as Wesker now, don't you? Alright. So we need to... No! That... Oh, I just missed my grab on one of them. So, unfortunately, we do have to go through this phase again. Oh, that's so annoying. That's gonna... It's gonna lose a bit of time. Oh, I just, just slightly, just slightly missed that time. So we are now, and back down to six minutes ahead. Ugh, so close. Just, slight, was just slightly off from grabbing it. So now this is where this is where we we really start to do um, a bit of backtracking. Uh, so we've already redone one level, the uh, Volk City we redid. Um, we're going to go to Baggage's Island. He's going to tell us to go back to the Sea of Tears. So we're going to redo the Sea of Tears next. Uh, but this time it's going to be the Dark Sea. Uh, sorry, no, not Sea of Tears. Sea of Tears is after this level. Uh, we're going to go back to Lalakusha. Um, we're going to do Noxious Lalakusha. And every, every time... Every time we come back and redo a level we've already done, there will be a new mechanic. So if you remembered with um, with Vulcan Inferno, we were being chased by the security bot. Um, in this one, we're going to get these these sort of um, we get these section we get these sections where um, Klonoa is um, Klonoa can't breathe. Let's wait for there we go. That's a little slow. Oh. Uh, so the, this is the uh, I said earlier that there is a there is a despawn trick that we can do on the PlayStation 2 version, uh, but not on this version. It's that that red gem. If you were uh, if you don't touch if you don't touch the floor um, before you reach that red gem on the PlayStation 2 version, go on, make it super bounce. All right, fine. A little slow, a little slow. That could have been, um, that could have been a lot neater. I oh, just can't, can't get a super bounce in now. Uh, I don't actually, I don't think I've explained super bounces. Um, super bounces are um, whenever you bounce on one of those trampolines, the green ones, um, you have to hit X. Or jump at the right time to then make Klonoa jump higher. Um, for Klonoa, for Klonoa um, there's actually two jump buttons and two shoot buttons. Um, by default, jump is at both X and triangle. Um, and if you if you hit both, if when trying to do a bounce, if you uh, if you push both X and triangle at the exact same time, you'll do what's called a super bounce. Where you bounce really high. I actually did. I actually did one there, but you didn't really see it because um, we then went straight up into that um, into that tornado. That's a super bounce. I'm just going to make sure I'm definitely. Oh, I didn't need to worry about being cleared over that. Uh, 
Oh, that was really stupid. Oh well. It didn't cost me too much time. Just, just meant, just meant getting through that room was slightly sloppy. Nothing major. I uh, didn't abuse the 2.5D. They can do for that one, um, but also you you need to make sure that the moves around you spawn. Oh, excuse me. So there's a trick here that I'm not going to attempt. Oh, but I do need um, I do need this Laquari to come with me. There's a trick, again, it's a trick that is doable on the PS2 version, but I've not managed to do it on this version yet. Um, you can you can angle the um, the pendulum so that it um, it swings into the into the block, but it's really tricky. Requires quite a, a quite a particular angle, and as I said, I haven't managed to do it on this version yet. Uh, so apparently, I lost apparently I lost a bit of time on that that level. I'm quite sure where, or is that still the previous segment? Is that the 22 seconds I lost from? Oh no, I saved one minute and 17 seconds. That 22 was still then um, from um, from messing up Palante. Right now we're going back to the sea of tears. This is the very first level of the game again, uh, but this time it's dark. Um, and just like the previous level, it's going to have a um, it's going to have an oxygen mechanic. But instead of it being, instead of us having like an oxygen meter, it's darkness, and we need to kill these. We need to kill these blue enemies with lights around them um, to keep the light on us. I say it's, it's really dark now, so it's called the Dark Sea of Tears. Uh, there's going to be another big skip coming up uh, where we're going to we're going to use Popka. Uh, it's actually in this room here. So I'm just going to concentrate for a second on this uh, on this room. Oh, I, oh, I just did it. I didn't quite make it. Okay, second try. I wasted a little bit of time there. Okay, two, two again. Like, like with some other tricks, two tri two attempts isn't bad, but that really is one that I should be getting right first try every time, because it's not it's not that difficult. It's just a time. It's just a timing thing. Making sure you, making sure you don't actually go too fast. Um, you want to make sure that uh, Kanoa hangs in the air um, in a couple of locations. Oh, I didn't grab the. Um, I actually didn't grab the um, the light, the light monster there. Let's make sure I definitely grab this one. Uh, we'll grab this one by throwing that backwards you see that there was some blue or like some blue dots that appeared um that's the the darkness creeping in just gonna use that to jump over those enemies that's all really nice that was that was all relatively smooth uh, I've got full health here, which is nice because we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna just skip that by doing that. Uh, that was good. And um, some sometimes that will go a little bit wrong, and you'll have to, and you'll have to do it in. Uh, you have to do it in two. Take two hits. Um, that was a nice little recovery there. I um, made a made a slight judgment error there with um, how I was jumping and started to fall down that pit, uh, but managed to recover with Popka. Sometimes that's um, that's all we really need Popka for um, in the cer certain levels later on, um, particularly the uh, the slider levels, where it's just nice to have Popka there as a as a backup just in case something goes wrong. Uh, we'll ignore that one. I can see that the darkness is um, 
is slowly creeping in, but we'll get to we'll get to the end of the level before it gets gets anywhere near me. There we go, and uh, that was the dark sea. It is. Uh, it looks like that's a time save because time has already stopped. I'll see it now. There we go. Nineteen seconds. Closing in on uh, on eight minutes ahead. Remember, we need really need to get to twelve minutes ahead. Um, there are there are a couple of um, there are a couple of big levels coming up. Uh, we've got our next slider level here. This is the empty sea of tears. So this is not a repeat of the previous level. This is a completely different level. Um, there's not actually a lot that happens in this level. It's pretty straightforward. It's it's um, I like the music. Um, it uses Klonoa's own theme. That that piccolo there. That is um. That is Klonoa's theme. It's not get killed by any of these. Um, touch, uh, touch wood. This is a deathless run so far, which to this to, to this day in ten years of speedrunning, this game, over ten years of speedrunning this game, I have never had a completely deathless run. Um, there is a level coming up where I will deliberately die three times. Uh, for for what we call a death warp, it's the only only time in the game where we can do a death warp. Well, th there's three times in the same level where we can do a death warp. Um, but yes, to to this day, I have not had a run where those three deaths are the only three deaths I've had. Fingers crossed. Today might finally be the day. Don't really need to worry about getting getting more gems for more lives. <clears throat> as long as as long as I've got lives for the de for the uh, deliberate deaths I'm gonna have. Oh, wait, this isn't a deathless. What am I talking about? It took me two attempts at the um, Ishra's Ark skip, and it took me two attempts at the um, Empty Sea of Tears um, at the um, Dark Sea of Tears skip. This is not a deathless run. What am I talking about? I'm just talking crap. Not today, folks. <laughs> I haven't I haven't had any really stupid deaths elsewhere though. Uh, there's usually there's usually another like really dumb death. I just fall down a random pit for no good reason. Or some other crap. We are coming up to um, the net. The next level, um, we got a, we got a, we got a, we got a boss coming up here um, after this level, uh, which is a really annoying boss. It's probably my, it's probably my least favourite boss in the in the game. It's, um, it can be quite challenging. Um, and then we've got the longest level in the game, which is um, Ishra's Ark revisited, our, la our last backtrack level. Although not in the same position on the world map. We just take damage there. It's, it's quicker to just take that damage. Uh, but that is the end of uh, this. Uh, there is this Resark. That's where we're headed. More time safe there. All right, this is Embryo Compass. This is Cursely Arena. As I say, this is um, probably my le least favorite boss in the game, but it's giving me a very good start there. No, this is why I hate this boss. She can be horrible like this. No, oh, I th <sighs> she jumped way a lot earlier than I was expecting. Oh, she's going to go for another run. Okay. Yeah, ideally what we want to do is we want to ideally what we want to do is we want to get to her before she jumps but we'll um we'll we'll settle for <sighs> yeah i'm not going to be able to get to her in time so we'll play it we'll play it safe i in an ideal world we get to her before she jumps um 
and sort of bat and sort of oh wow that freaking moo just like absolutely dunked on me just like i'm gonna get you cool that's uh phase phase two now we move on to phase 2.5 which is just a repeat of phase one but now she turns black and she's um she jumps higher she's a bit more aggressive all right where am i um oh first one's there damn it i missed no oh, i just i just mistimed that jump and um she just jumped Oh, oh, and now I'm <sighs> taking ages. That's why I hate this boss. Th this is without a doubt the hardest boss in the game. This is, this is harder than the final boss. And much more punishing time-wise. I still, I think I made similar mistakes um, during my first run. So, um, we, this might still be a time save. The thing, the random thing with this boss is where the, um, that was better. The random thing with this boss, I'll, I'll let her jump. There we go, done. Bonk. The random thing with this boss isn't really how Lee Arena moves or how Lee Arena jumps. It's where the, um... It's where the Urbils, the, the electric enemies, where they spawn. Um, that's what makes this random. So probably see, yeah, you can see that that was still a time save because I messed it up during my first run as well. Um, so there's a lot of time that we could save on that boss. All right, to Ark Revisited, this is another big time save, bo uh, time save level. So first thing we're going to do is hit that checkpoint. Make sure we've got uh, Popker out. Um... And as I said, this level is the only level where we get to do a trick called Death Warping. So I'm going to jump over there because uh, I want to get a key and the key is on the other side here. So there's the key. So we'll just jump over him. It's going to jump right up in the air. We'll go underneath him. I need to, uh, I need to start preparing for, preparing for it. Uh, so that that hit I took was deliberate, um, as as the name in as as you might guess by the name, death warping involves dying. Uh, so we we want to make sure that we've only got one hit point. Not going to grab that checkpoint. Very important. I don't grab that checkpoint. Instead, I'm going to do is I'm going to going to take a hit from that. Oh, I should. I was only supposed to kill two of those. So I'm going to kill that one. And then die like that. Now, hopefully, if I've timed that right, I should be back at the first checkpoint. There we go. I'm back at the first checkpoint, but the engine is still blowing up. I then go back outside, and that progresses. So first first one done well. So um, so the what we were actually doing there... Uh, what we're actually doing there is um, there is a checkpoint that occurs after we start blowing up the the engine. However, that checkpoint um, that checkpoint um, occurs slightly after, just very slightly after the trigger. For the um, for the engine exploding, there is a small, a very small window in between the trigger for the um, the engine exploding and um, the checkpoint that we take from it. So in that small window, and it is like less than a second that window. In that small window, we kill ourselves so that the engine being uh, the engine exploding has triggered. That's the checkpoint we're gonna we're gonna walk back to, but we haven't got the checkpoint. Wiggle there, dropped that. I I dropped that. Um, oh, I was hoping to I was hoping to uh, 
to get hit and bounce to the left there. Because again, want to make what I need to be getting down to uh, to only one health. Stare. Popka, Popka jump as we open the door to, to cancel the animation of um, Klonoa using the key. All right, number two. This is the most difficult. Um, I would not be surprised if I don't get this. So I'm going to do that. No. I'm for, I, no, I'm, I missed it completely. Uh, luckily, if you get it wrong you uh, and you're too slow, then you just do, you just go back to the, the most recent checkpoint here. As I say, uh, Engine 2 is the most difficult. Um, so it is not a surprise that I didn't get it. Luckily, the trip uh, back to outside... All you got to do is get outside. Um, and the trip to, trip to get outside for Engine 2 is the shortest. And we're now back outside. Uh, so we now have this um, rather long on-rail section. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you've got any donations or messages, now's a really good time. <laughs> this, is a, this is a good time usually to, um, to hand it over to the host for a couple of minutes because we're really not we're just we're just sat here we, we have got a couple of things to do we need to throw moves at these gherkins i don't know what these are <laughs> like they look like they're made of jade but then when you throw an enemy at them you can sort of see like it's a fruit on the inside i don't i don't know what they are they're weird that's what they are But I made I made quite a few mistakes um, in my initial run of this, so there is going to be hopefully a big time save. If um, hopefully we can start getting towards ten minutes, because we're running out of levels. Um, we got the we got the rest of this level. There's one more engine to go. We've then got the um, second longest level in the game, which is also the last traditional side scroller, um, which is the Kingdom of Sorrow. We've then got a slider level, the Forgotten Path, and then we've got the final boss, the King of Sorrow. We can do exact same trick that we did in uh, in the first first version of this level. Bum ba bum. Super bounce. That works really nicely if you can if you can get a super bounce into it. Uh, one of the, uh, this one, this one can be a bit of a tricky, a uh, bit of a tricky jump. Yep. I, uh, I, I bounce up a bit too high there. That's better. That's a, that's another death. I hope, uh, I hope people are keeping count. We are just about to um, approach one hour. One hour IGT. There we can uh, blow up that boomy a bit, a bit prematurely. Again, we can do the same here, so that we can grab the Laquari quickly. We could, we could just jump over the top there, but. Then we'd have to try and jump over the top of the way back. Again, Pop, Pop can make some of these puzzles rather trivial. That should be a lot more difficult. Uh, here, I'm going to play this safe, grab this Moo. I think I would have actually made it. Uh, there's a really neat trick that I do here. Hopefully that's landed. Yes! Uh, I love that. I love that trick because it's one that I is one that I'm super consistent at. Uh, so that that trick there, um, when you throw a boomy 
um, the boomy will always explode after a preset time. So after being in the air for a specific amount of time, a boomy will always explode. So the idea is we throw we throw it at that block so that it explodes just before it hits the block. Because uh, if it if it hit the block, it would just fall, and then we'd have to wait for the timer of the boomy instead. But uh, this way, it um, it explodes just as it's about to hit the block. Saves um, saves a little bit of time. All right, last engine skip. Uh, Three is not normally too difficult. Uh, though I haven't uh, I haven't taken any damage yet, so I've got to be I've got to be quite fast here. Oh, I don't think I actually. Oh no, I did it! Yes, I didn't think I'd even got the boomy in the um, boomy in the hole, but I did it. That was perfect. Sweet. Um, engine skip three was a success. And that is a time save of 1 minute 38. We are 9 minutes and 21 seconds ahead. I don't know if we can get sub 110. Because we're, we're aiming, we need 12 minutes or just under, tw just under 12 minutes time save. So it depends what I can do in this level. Because there isn't any time save in, um, in the next level. Because the next level is um, the Forgotten Path, and there's no time saving it, because... Oh, no, that's not good. Now's not the time to be making really silly mistakes. Um, Yeah, so time save is all going to come down to this level, really. There's a little bit of time saving in the final boss, but not a lot. Yeah, I don't think we're... I don't think there's three minutes worth here. But we'll see what happens. Open that door. Very long level, throws a lot of stuff at you. There's um, there's a few different puzzles. There's a few different um, sort of, um, sections of just, you know, grab it, grabbing these lums and, you know, managing your movement. Plus, it's very somber and, and quite slow with the music. So, the, you know, so it gives you that, that sort of, you're nearly at the end kind of feeling. Yeah, it's... Just uh, keep going a little bit further. Once again, Pop can make some of these puzzles a bit trivial. You should just grab this lum and then um, wait on it to to get over those two enemies, and they they bounce against each other and then start running towards you. Obviously, we don't need to do that. That was really nice. Giant, uh, giant spiker. Jump over the giant spiker. Uh, this uh, level does introduce us to a couple of new enemies as well um, that we haven't seen before. Even, even all the way up to the very end of the game. There's, there's the boomerang. The boomerang guy. I mean, it's understandable. We're now in the kingdom of sorrows. They're completely completely lost and forgotten area of um, of Lunatia. So of course there's going to be enemies and monsters that we've never seen before. Use pop kits to just jump up there. Nice and simple. Bounce. That was nice. That 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 could have gone really that could have gone really badly, but that went really well. All right, we've now got a couple of really annoying puzzles. This this one is my least favorite puzzle in the game because it's not really a puzzle. It's just about aiming, um, and making sure that you don't miss. And I missed. Damn it! I 
gonna wait for it to come back round. Gotcha. Okay, two two attempts at that. Um, we've got our second second Laquarie puzzle. This this one's a nice easy one. Oh, I went the wrong way. Where we just do that. I don't actually use Popka for this one. I actually do this one. Um, do this one the traditional way. And then this one. This one's not tricky at all. It's just a bit. Uh, it's just a bit long-winded and annoying. There we go. <laughs> I say like, that, that one's not tricky at all. It's just there. Uh, and now we have some more long on rails sections. Well, like the game teases us with gems and things to, to go and collect, but it's like, there's no point. We're, we're much safer just sitting on this. I, I have the health to, to, you know, I could have just taken damage from that spiker and it wouldn't have been a problem, but I would just keep moving. Trying to think, trying to think where my big, um, where my big time losses have been. Palante was a big time loss. Little bit of a time loss in, in Ishra's arc. If I could have, um... if I could, if I could have done all three engines and not sort of made a mess in in a couple of little bits of it. Uh, getting, um, getting the um, the two big. Um, Popka skips right first try would have um, would have been um, good as well. So Dark Sea of Tears, Ishra's Ark. This this definitely is doable in less than one ten, but um, the more the more I you know now it sort of experience it, the more that maybe I think it's um, it's going to be very tight to get there. Might need might need some new tricks to do it. As long as it, as long as this beats Thursday's run, that's that's the more important thing. So my Thursday's run was, um, I think it was one thirteen, something. I so I'm not, I haven't got the splits for Thursday's run. There's a, um, a trick in this room that I'm just going to concentrate for for a second because it requires some timing. One, two, three. Perfect. That's not. I love that trick. Again, another another trick that I can I can do relatively um, relatively consistently. Uh, we are we are approaching the end of this level. I get another. One of these the only only level where we have the the golden helicopters they just last a little bit longer than the than the blue ones i think they're like twice uh, probably something like twice the uh twice the length uh and this is the this is the final room i have to make a slight adjustment here i have always bounced on this spring once that platform over on the top right has fully come into view um except that's what i used to do on the um that's what I used to do on the PlayStation 2 version, which was played in 4.3. Uh, this is in 16.9, and we can see a lot further over, so I have to wait a little bit longer now. As you see, otherwise I, I, I barely make it. Uh, this one is a lot simpler. We just bounce on it twice off the second bounce. We can um, use a pop jump. And that is the end of uh, Kingdom of Sorrow. So... Now this is going to determine whether there's any chance. Oh, 1032. We might, I might, I might be able to get a 110. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a 19, but I might just be able to get a 110, maybe. This level is not very long. Um... Uh, no. I don't even think I'm going to be able to 110. It's very, very tight. 
a, a one a sub 110 is going to be a, a very very tight run so a little trick that we can do there that i keep i kept forgetting about that trick um you uh for so because um Kloa kind of has a scripted dive down to that level um we don't have to use the jump pad we can just go past it and then Kloa will do the scripted float down Probably, uh, probably helps if I do actually maneuver around this um, this section of the level. This section can be quite taxing uh, if you're doing 100%. You're trying to get all of the like you got to try and get that gem. If you're doing 100%, this can be quite taxing. I've never done 100% as a speed run. I've I've 100%ed the game before, or at least I have on the, the PlayStation 2. I think I 100 percent it twice. Yeah. I re I reckon this is gonna be um I mean predicted time is a 110. I should should point should point out my predicted time according to live split is 110 right now. High 110, 110.48. So, same. What sub 110 is definitely doable because I've made, I've made enough mistakes that would save that time. Pal Palante, I think maybe, maybe even just getting Palante right first try, um, in state stage two of him of his fight might have been enough to, to clinch sub 110. But I think um, I think the best thing I can do right now, yeah, I can't I can't do the final boss. You can't snowboard on granite. Shows what you know. <laughs> yeah, I can't do the final boss in less than a minute. Um, the best thing I can do now, though, is um, is submit this because the um, the Klonoa, the Klonoa speedrunning mods um, are very good at uh, giving feedback. Whenever they, whenever they, um, whenever they go through and verify a run, they will always go back into the Discord server and give full feedback and say, you know, here's here's everything that we noted that you could have done better or changed or have you considered this? Um, which, oh, oh, no, oh, okay, I grabbed, grabbed it. There, I accidentally hit R1, which for me is also pause. Um, I was not trying to pause abuse, I promise. Oh, this could have been faster. Yeah, we're about to hit 110. So the question's going to be, question's going to be, can I can I still get 110? Might not be sub 110, but can I? Because that is that it. Oh wow, <laughs> one hour ten minutes on the fire the to to beat the first stage of um the King of Sorrow. Uh, whoa, 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 why did you split? <laughs> oh, I've got bad RNG. Oh. I don't know why that split it should not have split. I can still get a 110. Come on. Good RNG. Yes, it turned. Time is on the final hit. Don't die. 11045.
one hour, 10 minutes and 45 seconds. It is not sub 110, but it is a 110. And yes, just Palonte. <laughs> Stage two of Palonte would have been enough to get sub 110. Oh, right. Well, um, I'll do the usual. Make sure it's saved. Um, I I don't think we actually have to show the final IG. The final IGT after beating the King of Sorrow there, I think, is enough to warrant it. But for safety's sake, I like to go through the credits because it gives me a chance to do a bit of an outro. Go through the credits, and then we all uh, when we go back to load this save, it will show us what our final clear time was as well. And it should be one hour ten seconds forty five. Uh, one hour ten minutes forty five seconds. I don't know why live split split at the end it shouldn't do that i specifically wrote it so it it has to wait a certain amount of time before it can before it can split so something went wrong there but luckily i you know as long as, long as you're at this point you can undo a split and it will it remembers the time i suppose that life split is only here as a is a um as a reference it's it's the game that counts we, get, we don't have to have live split open at all if we don't want to, as long as we've got the in-game time. But 110.45. So, so close to sub 110. Ah, you say you missed it, do it again. It's tem I'm tempted. I'm tempted to do it again. I know where I went wrong. There's def There's more than 45 seconds. I mean, some of best is 108.41. Um... You know things that I can think of that that went wrong that would save the most amount of time. Um, Palante Palante stage two took two cycles instead of one. That probably in its own would have been enough. Um, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> um, what else? Um, the Ishra's Arc engine one skip took me two attempts. The um, Dark Sea of Tears cave skip took me two attempts. That really shouldn't have taken two attempts either. It should only take one attempt. I'm sorry, Axel. I've let you down. <laughs> Axel was the one who taught me. Um, what else? Um, Kingdom of Sorrow had a couple of issues. That probably could have... Kingdom of Sorrow could have been a little cleaner in a couple of places. But for the most part, it was okay. Um, I've got some bad RNG on King of Sorrow. King of Sorrow could have been a little faster. Um, oh, I had a death in um, against Kersley Arena. Kersley Arena was a big time loss as well. So, yeah, just just a few bits that really... 110. It, sub 110 is definitely doable. Good morning, Nick RP Green. You'll see, you'll see it. You'll see that. Ah, see, told you. Told you that's what it would say. Good morning. Not quite morning for me yet. It's only 20 past 11. Cool. Uh, and I didn't really talk much about it during my previous run. That's definitely. I, I know I wasn't actually running against my PB there. My previous PB was one, was one hour 13. Uh, so one one ten. That is now definitely my new my new PB. But also, as I said, I didn't really talk about it previously because I don't think it really matters too much at the moment. Um, technically, that is also world record because only because no one else has done this run yet. Everyone, most people are doing any percent um, non support mode because non support mode has always been more popular than support mode. Um, so yeah. Because no one else has done this, this is technically the world record. Unless someone's unless someone's done something since. But I think the best thing I could do now is just submit submit this, get it uploaded, um, and get it on the board. Um, I will I would like to try easy and hard. I th I don't think easy will be that much different. Um 
I mean, there's a couple there's a couple of bits where you could you know use a bit more damage abuse but i think for the most part easy's not going to change all that much hard will will obviously be quite different because there's certain tricks that you won't be able to do because you can't damage abuse um you know things like um uh, maze of memories you won't be able to to get past the giant uh, the giant crab um you won't uh uh Ishra's arc you won't be able to do any engine one skip um on the other hand the uh engine skips for um in arc revisited should be easier <laughs> um oh yeah easy um easy does require less hits on the bosses the bosses are a lot quicker um but anyway i'm gonna quickly just wrap up the the vod for this because this is almost certainly going on youtube and i'm gonna gonna submit this run um this is probably my agdq submission as well i i don't think i'm gonna be able to get another run of this in that's better than that um in a short amount of time um so yeah thank you very much for watching this if you are watching the vod on youtube um i've been nick rp green i will swap over to um to this view which i now have two webcams yeah i could be over here or i could be over here but let's go over here for the end uh, so yes thank you very much for watching and uh, you can catch me twitch.tv forward slash nick rp green every tuesday and thursday occasionally at the weekends as well um yeah thank you very much for watching and uh check out more Chloe 2 runs coming soon maybe to agdq 2023 let's hope fingers crossed